indeed at the time, quote, I had no sense of what Netscape was doing. But then the court was shown an email sent by Gates to some of Microsoft's top brass a few weeks before the meeting, outlining his strategy for dealing with Netscape. Gates declared that he thought there was, quote, a powerful deal to be done with Netscape, and that maybe Microsoft should, quote, buy a piece of them or something, adding that he, quote, would really like to see this happen. Did we have people who pushed it and, and did deals that probably in retrospect they shouldn't have? I would say, yeah, I think that we did. Um, that made it very tough on our competitors because we took advantage of our position. And uh, clearly, unfortunately, that's what you know became the dark cloud uh, over Microsoft. To have an anti-competitive lawsuit brought against you really meant that what we were trying to do was make things worse for consumers, whereas my day-to-day -day job was always around building a better product so that the people I knew and my mother and my brother and friends and so on would use my product because it was better. In June of 2000, the federal judge in charge of the Microsoft case issued his final verdict. Guilty, guilty, guilty. And he recommended that the company be broken up causing its stock market value to plunge by $30 billion overnight. The verdict brought the highest kites Internet Explorer team crashing down to earth. But it was even harder on Gates himself. The trial had taken a tremendous toll on Microsoft's boss. It wore him out, beat him down, made him physically sick. At one point, I was told by some Microsoft board members, Gates had even broken down in tears at a company board meeting. Eventually, however, a federal appeals court, though it agreed with the judgment that Microsoft had indeed systematically broken the law, decided the verdict was too harsh and rescinded the order to split the company in two. To many people, it seemed as if Microsoft had gotten away with murder yet again. But now, a few years later, standing here at Stanford in front of the Gates Computer Science Building, ironically just around the corner from the building that Jim Clark paid for, the story doesn't seem quite that simple. As the trial concluded, Gates handed over his position as Microsoft CEO to his number two, Steve Ballmer. And soon he began to focus more and more of his time and effort on his philanthropic interests housed at the Gates Foundation. What's clear is that very much like J.D. Rockefeller, that robber baron of an earlier age, Gates may wind up changing the world as much with his charity work as he did at Microsoft. What's equally clear is that Microsoft is no longer the force it once was. The cowboy swagger and bravado that defined the company in its golden years is gone. Although Microsoft won the browser war, the revolution sparked by Netscape unleashed a new generation of startups, companies like Google, that have made Microsoft look old and clueless and lumbering, just as Microsoft and Gates made IBM look two decades ago. And so an eternal lesson of the high-tech world has been proven true again. It's appear.